Hans Christian Andersen, does that name ring a bell? Well, he is known for writing many of our childhood fairy tale books, including The Princess and the Pea, The Ugly Duckling, and The Snow Queen, which, fun fact, Disney's Frozen is actually based off of. And his name just so happens to be Hans, who is the villain in Frozen. But this dude totally isn't a villain. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and how are you doing today? Seriously, how are you? Are you good? It's great. Let's begin with the top 10 obscure Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales. Now, Hans Christian Andersen was a Danish author who has written more than 168 tales. Out of those 168 stories, there are tons that are quite dark and even gruesome. Kicking it off with number 10, we have the Tinderbox. Now, this has nothing to do with the dating app Tinder, so don't even think about it. This story is about a soldier who encounters an ugly old witch on his journey home from war. This witch gives the soldier a quest to climb up a tree that has her grandmother's tinderbox at the top of it. However, guarding the box are three dogs, each with different sized eyes. Each dog was guarding a different box that had treasure. The first box had copper, the second had silver, and the last had gold. However, when he reached the trunk with the gold coins, he threw away all the other coins and just kept all the gold ones. Not a smart businessman, I may say. Anyways, he then refused to turn over the gold and, well, like any other happy fairy tale, he cuts off the witch's head. He then used this gold until he struck poverty. Told you, not a good businessman. One day he struck the tinder box and the dogs appeared asking him what he wished for. So like genies but in the form of dogs. He asks for wealth, he receives it and then wishes to find a princess to wed. The story continues on with him fighting the queen who denies him from seeing the princess and him using the dogs and his wishes to try and get the princess. Now this fairy tale has a more darker ending. The dogs go to rescue the soldier who ended up in jail for trying to court the princess. The dogs kill the guards, king, and queen, and the soldier and the princess live happily ever after. What a truly happy ending. Well, for some people. In our ninth spot, we have the red shoes. So this fairy tale revolves around a girl named Karen. In fact, Anderson named this character after his half-sister who he wasn't too fond of. Basically, Karen is an orphan who receives a pair of red shoes as a gift. Now she loves these fancy looking red shoes so much that she wears them everywhere, even to church, where it was a sin to wear red. But that didn't stop her and she continued to wear her red shoes to church. Like. Dang, were they like Louis Vuittons or something? I don't know. Anyways, as a punishment, she was cursed and forced to dance unceasingly for the rest of her life. Imagine that, like, oh gosh guys, here comes Karen and she's all like, hey guys, what's up? Not a fun time. Now Karen, tired of having to dance all the time, calls on someone's manager and complains. Just kidding. She actually comes up with a solution and gets her feet cut off with an ax. Oof. Yikes. Coming in with number eight, we have the naughty boy. Now, this poem is loosely based off of Cupid. In Roman mythology, Cupid is the son of Venus, who is the goddess of love. But this story doesn't retell the classic story of Cupid. This fairy tale starts with an old poet who is at home one day writing, well, poems. When all of a sudden there was a banging at the door and a small, bare, wet, cold little boy appears. He had long golden curly hair and he carried a bow and arrow with him. Regardless of him being armed, the old man lets the boy in and the boy says his name is Cupid. The old man makes the small boy some food and nurses him back to good health. Then little Cupid shoots the man in the heart. The old man is filled with pain and yells out at Cupid calling him a naughty boy. From then, Cupid continues to go around town shooting people in the heart with arrows, except they're just filled with pain and not for love with each other. This definitely is an interesting take on Cupid. In seventh place, we have the Rose Elf. Elves are cute little mythical creatures, right? We have the house elves like Dobby from Harry Potter, or even the cute little elves that help Santa during Christmas. However, the elf in this fairy tale may not be as friendly as you think. This story is about a small elf that resides inside a rose. This elf was out wandering one night when he encountered a beautiful young woman and her lover. The couple are saying their goodbyes as he was sent out on a quest by the woman's brother. 
little confusing, I know. So this elf ends up inside a rose that the man takes with him on his travels. However, the woman's brother ends up murdering him and hiding the body. The elf witnessed this all and told the woman. The woman then digs up her lover's head and plants a jasmine bush on top of it. The brother then takes the jasmine bush and well, the elves that lived inside the bush then get even and murder the brother. For our number 6 story we have the girl who stepped on bread. This fairy tale surrounds a girl named Inger. Now Inger was pretty but she was a vain poor brat who worked as a maid in a big rich house. One day she was sent home from work with a big loaf of bread. However as Inger travels home she encountered a big puddle. Not wanting to ruin her clothes she decides to do what anyone else would do. And she throws a loaf of bread down as a stepping stone. Seriously you couldn't have just walked around it? You just wasted perfectly good bread. However. Karma hits her fast because as soon as she stepped on that bread, she sunk down into a witch's bog. The witch told her that she would live among the witch covered in mud and bugs until she dies. Some days, Inger would feel teardrops on her head from her mom mourning over her daughter. Days go by and Inger is finally sent to heaven when she acknowledges her sins and bad behavior. This all happened because of a loaf of bread. We are now halfway with the shadow. Now in this fairy tale, a person's shadow isn't just the dark shape projected on the ground, but instead it has a personality of its own. Now this story involves a philosopher whose shadow leads him to explore an intriguing looking balcony. Beats me how a balcony can be intriguing, like ooh look at those rails and the stable structure. Ah. Anyways, the philosopher's shadow never returns until years later. Apparently the balcony led to the house of poetry. His shadow became extremely knowledgeable in poetry, and he even became rich and famous. However, since the shadow is indeed a shadow and not a human, he asks the philosopher to keep the secret between them. Eventually the philosopher becomes ill, so the shadow takes him on a nice little spa retreat. Aww, how sweet of him. However, at the spa, this shadow falls in love and decides to murder the philosopher. He got away with it too since people thought that the shadow was the real human and that the philosopher was just the shadow. In fourth place we have the tale called Under the Willow Tree. This story is about two kids, Nud and Joanna. They grew up together having their parents being close friends and being good neighbors. They often would hang out and talk about stories or songs. Years later they started to drift apart. He became a shoemaker and she became a singer. Now, Nud had always had feelings for Joanna and finally confesses this to her. And she states that he thinks of him as a sibling. Ouch. Apparently being friend zone was even a thing back in 1853. She eventually moves back to France, but Nud follows her there. This time, however, she is engaged. Ouch again. He continues to wander Europe until he stumbles among a willow tree. He eventually falls asleep under the tree and dreams about her loving him back. Whilst among this dream, Nud freezes to his death. Definitely not the most uplifting story, that's for sure. For number three, we have The Professor and the Flea. This story was written in April of 1873 and is one of the weirdest love stories I have read. The story surrounds a professor that would fly in a hot air balloon until one day he crashed it. He no longer could make any money because of it and his wife left him, leaving him alone with just a flea. However, he decided to start teaching the flea to perform. He dressed him up in a little tiny outfit and taught him tricks like being shot out of a cannon. One day, they were performing in front of a princess who, after seeing the flea's daring cannon trick, fell in love. I mean, who wouldn't? Daredevil. Ooh. She ordered him to live with her and even took a strand of her hair and made the professor tie it on the flea's leg so that she could attach the flea to her earring and have him, you know, just chill there as she weird. Now the professor didn't like how the princess stole his money maker and friend, so he decided to trick the princess into letting him fly away in a hot air balloon in which he took his flea friend back and used it to escape. In our second spot we have the story of a mother. Now this fairy tale is one of Han's more darker ones. This story surrounds a caring mother fearful of her sick child's death. One day as the mother was tending to her child, an old man enters the home. The old man was death himself who stole her child away when his mother was sleeping. Now. This mother was not going down without a fight, so she went after death. Along her journey to save her baby, she encountered numerous figures that would only let her pass for something in return. The night figure made her sing, the rose bush drained her heart of blood, the lake took her eyes and a woman took her hair. After sacrificing these parts of herself, she finally reaches death, who is tending to his flowers. You know. Just the usual thing death is known to do. Now these flowers actually represent the souls of the children that he has collected. 
The mother fights to get her child back, but Death claims that he is doing her a favor, as her child would have endured much more suffering. The woman is then satisfied knowing her child is at peace and returns home. The end. We are now at our number one spot with Claude Hans. This story is about a competition between three brothers to figure out who is the wittiest and who will woo the heart of a princess, since she only wants to marry the wittiest in the kingdom. Now, two of the brothers were really extra and both thought that they could woo the princess for different reasons. The older brother knew the Latin dictionary by heart, as well as he memorized the town newspaper for the last three years. The other brother memorized all of the guild laws and regulations. <laughs> How attractive. Anyways, they both set out on their horses and headed over to the castle. Now the last brother by the name of Claude Hans also wanted to try and capture the heart of the princess. So he headed over on his goat and picked up some items along the way. No, not roses and chocolate, but a crow, a boot, and mud. Who doesn't love those items? I mean, come on. Although his brothers made fun of him, turns out Claude Hans won the princess over. How did this happen? Well. Basically, the princess was roasting a rooster, and Hans said that he could roast his crow in the boot and use the mud as gravy. Mmm, delicious. Well, apparently, the princess liked how witty this was, and they got married. The end. Definitely a strange story. Actually, this story is said to be loosely based off his life. Apparently, he was made fun of as a kid and was an outcast. This also explains why the character was named Hans. Thanks so much for tuning into today's video. As always, subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any upload. Give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below something interesting. Bye, everyone.